good morning students today we are going to discuss about the typical embedded system in module 3 in the typical embedded system we are going to discuss about the elements of embedded system core of the embedded system and general purpose and domain specific processes such as metro processor digital controllers dsp processors fpga and ASIC and um, application specific processes CTLD these are the things we are going to discuss the elements of the embedded system any embedded system consists of a system core output ports such as actuators input ports sensors and other supporting integrated circuits subsystems which is required for processing and memory that is to store the embedded firmware and some of the data which is relevant to the application to execute the application that can be stored in the data memory and the program memory for execution of the program communication interfaces are used for the uh, process that is called these are the elements of the embedded system let me see one by one so while talking about the elements of the embedded system a typical embedded system contains a single chip controller called master brain of the system the controller may be a microprocessor or it may be a microcontroller or it may be a FPGA device or it may be DSP processor or it may be a application specific integrated circuits. So ASIC or ASSP are the analog device for the energy metering application purpose we are using this one. Embedded hardware software systems are basically designed to regulate the physical variable or to manipulate the state of some devices by sending some control signals to the actuators or device connected to the output ports of the system in response to the input signal provided by the end users or the sensors which are connected to the input ports. So embedded system can be viewed as a reactive system. The control is achieved by processing the information coming from the sensors and the user interface and controlling some actuators and various types of memories such as ram rom can be used especially ram random access memory is ram dram uh, nvram are used for this purpose the size of the RAM also varies from few bytes to kilobytes or megabytes depends upon the application requirements. The embedded system without control algorithm implemented memory is just like a newborn baby. It's all having the peripherals but not able to capable of making any decisions depending upon the situation as well as the real world changes. Only the difference is that the memory of newborn baby is self-adaptive meaning that the baby will try to learn from the surroundings and from the mistakes committed. For the embedded system it is the responsibility of the designer to impact the intelligence to the system. Memory of the system is responsible for holding the control algorithms and other important configurations of the details. For most embedded system the memory storing the algorithm or the configuration data is fixed type that is which kind of uh, ROM is used a read only memory. It is not available for the end user for modification. Most of the types of memories used in embedded systems are one time programmable OTP, PROM programmable read only memory, uh, UVEP ROM and uh, EEP ROM and flash memories. Normally in any embedded system now flash memories are used flash memory is the technology where the uh, memory content may be erased with the help of uh, uh, with the kind of technique called eep rom and it can be stored as like the pro depending upon the control applications the memory size may vary from few bytes to megabytes 
The system requires the temporary memory for performing arithmetic operations and control algorithm execution is known as working memory. Normally random access memory is used as a is called as a working memory. Yes. First we will discuss about the microprocessor. What do you mean by microprocessor? Why it is called as microprocessor? Micro means tiny, tiny processor. So a yeah, silicon chip representing the CPU which is capable of performing arithmetic operations as well as the logical operations. Predefined set of instructions which specific to the manufacturer. It is a general CPU contains ALU control unit and working registers and the memories of the output devices, ports, timers, everything will be connected outside of the system. The microprocessor depend in dependent unit and it requires combination of other hardwares like memory, timer, interrupt controllers to pro make it as a microprocessor based system. Next one is a microcontroller. It is also called as a smallest uh, controller which consists of a processor as well as the timer, memory, input, output, ports all in single chip that is also called as an uh, on chip and off chip off chip is nothing but the microprocessor on chip is nothing but microcontroller it is also integrated silicon chip containing cpu scratch pad ram special and general purpose registers arrays on chip rom flash memory for the program storage timers interrupt controls units and dedicated io ports microcontroller can be general purpose as like Intel 8051 and our application specific like uh, automotive AVR or Atmel corporations designed speci specifically for autom automotive applications. Since microcontroller contains all the necessary functional block for the independent working they found greater place in the embedded domain in the place of microprocessor. Raspberry Pi is a very good example for the microcontroller. Instead of carrying the laptop with the keyboard separately and uh, uh, mouse, everything, we can connect with a simple, small, compact uh, thing in the ra Raspberry Pi. Microcontroller are cheap, cost effective, or readily available in the market. So, the block diagram says about a microprocessor which consists of three components. Uh, ALU registers and control unit and the microcontroller consists of um, ALU register and control unit along with the RAM, ROM, timer, serial communication, interrupts, watchdog timer this plays a very vital role and ports, ports will be connected this is nothing but the microcontroller based system or microcontroller system and DSP processors, powerful specific, uh, special purpose uh, 1632 bit microprocessors are designed specifically to meet the computational demands and power constraints of the today's embedded audio video communication applications. So audio video processing can be done with the embedded system processor but it is very complex so we are going for the DSP applications. Now last week uh, that uh, M55 and the ETO OS 55 is introduced by the ARM, microcontro ARM processor. Uh, it is specially designed for the DSP application as well as the um, embedded applications. Both will be performed in them. And DSP processors are two to three times faster than the general purpose microprocessor because general purpose microprocessors are which are having low uh, computational task when compared to the DSP because it requires more number of computational due to the uh, multimedia applications. DSP implements algorithms in hardware which speed up the execution whereas the general purpose processors implement the algorithm in firmware. The speed of the execution depends upon primarily on the clock of the processor. DSP can be viewed as a microchip designed for the performing the arithmetic operations. A typical DSP processors are uh, incorporates the following in its program memory, data memory, computational engine, I/O ports, audio video signal processing, telecommunications. This is how we have to select a DSP processor for our application based upon the architectural features, size of a chip, DMA, direct memory access, and a special instruction to support DSP operation, I/O input output capabilities, execution speed. 
we have to consider and uh, for the FFT and FIR filters uh, type of arithmetic we are using in the DSP word length we are using in the DSP so these are the things to be considered when we are going for a DSP processor and what are the DSP uh, real-time embedded systems in the sense uh, digital radio graphic imaging digital storage transmission web wireless technology ultrasound medical imaging uh, real-time camera applications and then optical wearables car awake warning system speech recognition system these are all the ESP things next one is application specific uh, uh, integrated circuits it's a microchip designed to perform a specific or unique applications ASIC integrates uh, several functions into single chip which reduces the system development cost and uh, ASIC consumes very small area in the total system ASIC is prefabricated for special applications it can be uh, custom fabricated by using the components called reusable building block the fabrication of ASIC requires non-refundable initial investment for the process technology and configuration expenses next one is a PLD programmable logic devices provide the specific function including device to device interfacing data communication signal processing data display timing and control operations almost every other functions a system must perform a logic device can be classified into two broad categories one is a fixed and programmable the circuit in a fixed logic device are permanent they perform one function or set of function once manufactured they cannot be changed and programmable is nothing but programmable logic device offers customers wide range of logic capacity features speed and voltage characters these devices can be reconfigured to perform any number of functions at a time at any time pld are rewritable memory technology and devices reprogrammed to change the design and fpga and cplds are like uh, uh, FPGA is nothing but and CPLDs are two major types of programmable logic devices. FPGA offers highest amount of logic density because FPGAs are used in um, the, the software used in the FPGAs are Xilinx, Spartan and these things highest performance okay. These advanced FPGA devices are also offer features such as built-in hardwire processors substantial amount of memory clock management system and support for many of the latest very fast device to device signaling technologies fpgas are used wide variety of application ranging from data processing and storage to instrumentation telecommunication and digital signal processing cplds by contrast offer much smaller amount of logic up to 10,000 gates CPLDs offers very uh, predictable timing characteristics and are those ideal for the critical control applications CPLDs uh, such as a Xilinx school runner series also requires extremely low amount of power and very expansive inexpensive making them ideal for cost sensitive battery operated portable applications such as mobile phones and control logic signals and cards cards is nothing but commercial of this self component the product one which is used as assets the cards products are designed in such a way provide a easy integration interoperability with this existing system typical examples for the cards are remote controlled toy car unit rf circuitry high performance high frequency microwave electronics higher bandwidth adc converters devices components Operation at very high temperatures, UV, IR detectors, etc. etc. 